everyone. At last, the Bangkok Chronicles. Now this complete series is all coming out of here, ad lib, adding some stuff behind me on the green screen to try and get you through this story. Now, what is the Bangkok Chronicles? Back in the end of 2002, I left my bar job as a manager in Pattaya, in Thailand, and I decided I was going to go to Bangkok and stay in Bangkok for a while. As it turned out, it was going to be for two years. Um, dating my wife, getting married, and then the move to the UK. But it's going to be a story and information for you about this two year period. When I left Patea, I had in the bank in Thailand $3,000, American dollars equivalent. And about another ooh, 40, 35,000 baht in cash in my pocket. So right at the beginning, I'd said my goodbyes to everyone in the bar, the boss and everyone. And it was a Sunday evening, I said goodbye, we had a bit of a party. But I didn't get drunk on the Monday morning early I arranged a taxi that I just found a guy in Soy 7 a couple of days before um, that taxi driver was called P and I still use him to this day some 15 years on and he's similar age to me so he's in his 50s now good sensible driver when you can find a taxi driver that doesn't drive fast and can speak a bit of English or your native tongue, get their number. So I'd arranged for Pete to pick me up on the Monday morning, about nine in the morning, said goodbyes the night before, but handed the keys over. The boss came in, said our goodbyes. And I jumped in the taxi and two rucksacks. All I had after two years in the bar scene, two rucksacks full of clothes, a couple of other bits and pieces, and I had a laptop that was probably two and a half years old, but it was still okay, it was adequate. Back then I think it was, I can't remember which version of Windows, but it was adequate, you could get on the internet with it. Jumped in the taxi, instructions, Bangkok, where? I had no idea. My plan was to find a condo, apartment. I'd been to Bangkok a few times in the previous two years and I wanted to be somewhere near Pratanam Market, the clothing wholesale market. It was pretty central, not far from anywhere, and there were lots of back streets in the Prasnam area, and I'd seen lots of condos online, but <clears throat> it was hard to work out prices and things. So we taxi up to Bangkok, hour and a half, whatever it was then, and I'd instructed P that I wanted to try and find a condo. Now, I didn't want to spend, the exchange rate back then was 75 baht to the pound. So I was looking at um, 10,000 baht a month is what I wanted to pay. In today's rates, you can pretty much double that, uh, I would suggest, for the same as I got back then maybe maybe not so much as double but almost double we arrived in bangkok 
and I said Prasnam area. P took me to a few streets back of the main road in Prasnam area was Petrobury Road and Pantit Plaza was a, a computer centre but we'll get on to that in another episode. I wanted to be somewhere near there. Anyway, he took me about four or five roads back from Petrobury Road to a condo and it was one of the centre point group. I got out the car, popped in and in though back then they wanted 18 and a half thousand baht I think it was for a, a 50 square metre condo. Had pool, gym, all sorts, secure, but it was just too much money, I didn't want to pay that. I was coming out and explaining to P that I wanted something half that price <laughs> and I wanted to be nearer to Pantip. It was very lucky because he, he was a Bangkok taxi driver. He rented his taxi every day and he knew Bangkok inside out. Um, and as soon as I said I wanted half the price, lucky for me, he took me to Soy Sip Gao, which was Soy 19 and Soy Sip Jet, Soy 17, Petrobri Road, right in the heart of the Pratanam market area. He took me in 17 and at the end a little alleyway underneath a bit of a complex, um, a little tight little alleyway and there's a lot of tight alleyways for cars inside Pratanam took me through this little alleyway and came up next to a doorway. I was a bit lost at this point. And parked his car and said, he's coming in with me. So we went in through, downstairs was, was a lot of shops, but actually shops and packing areas. There were lots of companies there, export companies, who'd had a shop and they were shipping goods all over the world. We walked through a few of these shops and there was an office at the back and we went in and pointed me into this girl um, and I asked about the condos and the complex was called the Judas Towers. I think it was J-U-D-I-S. Anyway, hopefully I'll put something up here for you. The Judas Towers. There was um, something like 10 floors. Well above us, the first few floors were car park for the above these shops and then condos and she looked after the first three floors and the price she came back was 10,000 baht. There's a swimming pool there above the car box um, which was you had to pay for and her room was a 35 square meter room 10,000 baht a month. She took me up to the second floor I think it was and it was okay it was it was fine um, I came back down and P the driver pulled me to one side said don't fix now I'll take you somewhere else anyway so again having a taxi driver that knew the areas and he drops off and picked off picked up at these places all the time he then took me back round by the car through another door and into a lift up to the, I can't remember, maybe the eighth floor. And these condos, certain floors were rented out to certain companies and different companies had a few of these floors that they rented out of the rooms. And the eighth floor, he took me into this room, office, and there was a guy there, I think he was called Somchai. He explained what I wanted and then they spoke English as well. And he said he had some, again, 35 square metre uh, room. And it was exactly the same as the ones downstairs. Popped in, showed me a couple, all the same. Now, they came with a double bed, a dressing table desk with a mirror, coffee table, a couple of seat settee, bathroom, um, bath, now his had bath and shower, once downstairs only had shower. And a bit of a kitchenette area, but there was a balcony. 
with a plastic table and chairs on there and it was a reasonable size balcony and looking down it was the side that was looking straight down to the swimming pool big half, what, half olympic size swimming pool below me and in front was the Pratanam market beautiful views his prices he asked me what I wanted it had air conditioning it had internet basic a plug on the wall socket and we did a deal he said for how long three months six months or a year now at this point I didn't know how long I was going to stay so I said to him three months but possibly a year possibly more didn't have the plans so he, he, he did me a deal and eight and a half thousand baht or ten thousand baht including all the bills the aircon water electric the internet line would be registered to him and it would give me the basic internet package all included 10,000 baht a month if I decided to stay for a year he'd drop it to 9,000 it was perfect fell lucky so I agreed 10,000 baht a month which then at 75 baht to the pound was uh, my calculations like wasn't a lot was it <laughs> 75 pounds a month yes <laughs> it was it was pennies I was very happy and P had sorted me out he'd got me just where I wanted to go paid him off he went and I had my condo um, two rucksacks clothes there were no plates cups kettles and I chatted to this some shy guy people had been there and gone and left stuff he gave me everything lovely guy fell on my feet kettle cutlery plates uh, even gave me a microwave berry uh, everything I think he gave me towels as well thinking back but there I was I'd arrived in Bangkok and in the Judas Tower it was coming up for Christmas I was single a little bit of money in the bank with a grand plan of trying to survive in Bangkok for as long as I could without having to face that journey going back to the UK to reality now these Bangkok Chronicles are going to be from here on how I survived in Bangkok as I said and how over the two years I managed to legally stay with visas how I made some money and made a living in Bangkok legal it, there's different ways of looking at it but yeah you can do it there are ways but it all goes down to uh, where the money is coming from and going to of uh, staying on the right side of the law and in future videos of this a lot of the time I was buying and selling and exporting and a bit of importing um, huge counterfeit market with copy items back 15 years ago nowadays a lot less um, you'd have to search around for some of the items nowadays but again it was still frowned upon the counterfeit goods and I didn't want to get into that market so that's the introduction that's me landed in Bangkok in a condo episode one Bangkok Chronicles done let's see how this goes I don't know how many episodes this is going to be but I'm going to try and give you with the use of this green screen information of where I was finding stuff where I was buying it maps the areas how I got around Bangkok um, tips and tricks and all the things I saw hopefully some of the information on this series will maybe inspire you maybe help you maybe help you save a few pennies maybe help you get around Bangkok in the rush hours so tune in for the next one 
hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed and if you are subscribed because I don't know the how many of these and when I'm going to upload them the little bell icon press that and when I do upload you'll be notified and you can keep in touch by email landersmiles thailand at gmail.com if you've got any questions or comments below see you on the next episode bye bye